this week I've been working on stinky two strokes. It's a long one, so you might want to go for a wee first. Hello and welcome to Tweed's Garage, where in this video I uh, disassemble my um, 1939 Excelsior Universal. You know, the one I bought in the last video. Yeah, so we sort of take it apart and uh, have a little look, see what horrors are lurking inside and, uh, and what we're going to do about it and where we're going from there. And there's a little sort of machinery montage. Um, so if you do need to go for a wee, you can go then. Okay, so come on in and uh, let's have a look. The first thing to do was uh, gather the tools and um, all, the, all the nut sizes of Whitworth, which was easy, and a soft blow hammer, a few screwdrivers and other bits and bobs. And then proceeded to take off the um, primary chain cover, just the one bolt in the middle that goes through, holds that on, and uh, used a bit of uh, UPVC cladding just rested on the foot pegs um, to uh, guide the oil away into the bucket rather than just letting it fall on the floor. So with the bolt removed, it was still sort of um, stuck on there for some reason. It, they'd use gasket sealer. Um, so even with a sort of gentle persuasion, it wasn't coming off. So I used a, a, th a thin feeler gauge and I just slid that in at the end and then run that round the mating surfaces just to break the uh, silicon sealant grip on it. And uh, after a while, it just sort of popped off allowed the oil to drain away. What oil there was, there wasn't a lot in there. Next was to uh, remove the uh, split link on the primary chain and um, take that off and that, that allowed me to uh, move the chain off of the gears. So once the split link was removed, it was just a case of uh, feeding the chain off the primary gears. And then with that removed and stored away, it was time to uh, drain the oil on the gearbox. There's a drain nut on the bottom of it, which is easy to access. But like most designs of these bikes, it's right above the frame. So all the oil hits the frame before it goes in the bucket. Next I moved on to the carburetor, sort of disconnected the uh, fuel union and then the clamping bolt and um, it sort of slipped off quite nicely and just stored that to one side. Then I moved on to the exhaust with a proper C spanner, but they were pleasantly easy to undo. I was, I was thinking they might be a bit of a Bit of a job to get off because they had paint and sort of rust holding them on but they came off okay it's just a case of unscrewing them undoing the uh, bracket bolts at the rear and then with those removed just a case of wheeling the bolt out and uh, removing the exhaust then moved on to the uh, clutch assembly it was a simple job of just undoing the uh, six screws that tensioned the springs. Um, I suspect these aren't the correct springs because the screw the screws were wound out quite away and, and there was uh, witness marks on the outer case where they'd been rubbing on the outer case. So hopefully with the correct springs that should cure that problem. So 
So the clutch was quite badly worn. The, the corks were worn right down, so it started running on the inner faces. You can see the sort of score marks there. And then remove the push rod. Release the uh, fuel pipe from the fuel tank. I'm just taking these bits off just to make it uh, easier to move it out of the frame without risking, you know, breaking the carburetor or the uh, decompressor valve. So just a case of unscrewing things and working my way around it. And then we remove the gear change lever, which is just secured with a locking nut. That you just undo a bit and then unscrew the uh, gear change rod. Then I'll move to the other side and remove the clutch cable. And then unbolted the uh, kick start. Just a pinch bolt holds it on onto the splines. And in a case of uh, wiggling it off and disconnecting the uh, kickstart spring that sort of pokes into the back of the, a hole in the back of the kickstart. And then just release the spring. And here on the flywheel, you can see the timing marks for when we set it back up, there's a line on the flywheel and a line on the uh, crankcase. Then with trepidation, we sort of undo the uh, cylinder head to see what uh, horrors we had inside. So with the cylinder head bolts undone, it's just a case of uh, give it a gentle tap with the hide mallet and off she come. Then I moved on to the drive chain and removed one of the uh, split links. Uh, when I say one of them, there was four split links. So I think somebody was getting their money's worth out of all the uh, odd bits of chain they had lying around. So once the tension was released on the back wheel, the chain came off. And then with all that done, it was a case of undoing the three mounting bolts, go through the frame. With those out, the engine just lifts out. So with the engine out of the frame, it's easy to uh, mount it in a vise on the bottom lug. And um, it just makes it a lot easier to work on the engine with it up on the bench in front of you. So uh, it was time to start taking it apart. The ball was looking good, but you could see there was a bit of uh, bearing play somewhere. So the first thing to do was uh, remove the flywheel using my um, Makita Impact, which is, uh, I only started using it, but it's a brilliant tool has the power to whiz stuff off and, and you don't have to uh, hold stuff really tight to get it off. So then next we remove the uh, clutch back plate and the primary drive sprocket. And then what we had to do was use the um, clutch spring screws, put them back in and, and just put the nut on the end of the shaft and then a few washers behind that and a washer big enough to um, catch on the edge of the screws and then just do those screws up evenly all the way round and it uh, pops the uh, 
back plate off of the shaft, off of its taper. So with the washer caught under all the screws, you just go around gently and evenly, tightening the screws up. And uh, it pops off really easy. So with the uh, gear and clutch back plate removed and uh, removing a little securing bolt at the top, it was just a case of um, removing the uh, back, back housing of the clutch assembly. And this gives you access to the final drive sprocket and uh, nut. So then I proceeded to remove the uh, cylinder head. Unfortunately, I didn't press record, so I lost that. But just a case of undoing the four nuts at the base and uh, moving the uh, barrel up and off. Um, so then I sort of gently heated up the piston to drive out the uh, gudgeon pin. Using a suitably sized socket just to uh, push it out after I removed the uh, clips. And off she comes. With the piston off, you can you can see now the uh, play on the big end. It seems to be on the big end, um, but until we get the crank out, we can't check the uh, the mains main bearings. But they felt okay. Next we remove the mag dyno which is held on with four screws that uh, secure it to the uh, crankcase. So with them removed, it's just a case of it just slides off. And I jammed the uh, final drive sprocket so I could get a spanner on there just to take off the uh, securing nut. So remove that. And then we flip the engine around the other way so we could gain access to the gearbox. And that's sort of secured with uh, six nuts. Just remove the six nuts. And then the gearbox withdraws out of the crankcases, just like that. With the gearbox input shafts removed, 
the the final drive output shafts but it um the gear hits on the selector fingers and um i've discovered what what you need to do is you you what you need to do is leave that in the case so when you reassemble the engine you put the bearing in put the output uh, shaft in and then and then bolt the two halves together because you can't get the gear past the selector shaft once it's all once the two halves are put together then went round and removed all the uh, nuts and studs around the crankcase securing the crankcase halves together and then applied gentle heat to the bearing housings to uh, ease it coming apart once the cases are warmed up nicely we uh, went and found the nylon mallet Then with the nylon mallet, we've got the gentle tap, moving it around, tapping on the crank, and it slid apart quite nicely. And then with the case off there, you can see the output, output shaft gear sitting there and the selector forks there. Then with that side off, we went round and heat the uh, other side of the crankcase to get the crankshaft out of the housing. This side's a bit harder to get out because it's got two bearings stacked, stacked one, up, one behind the other with a spacer in between, so it's a bit tighter to get off. And then the same procedure. Once you've got it warm enough, Give it some swift, gentle taps. Up she came. No arm done. One of the main bearings was still in the housing, so I uh, installed an internal bearing puller. It's sort of like a slide hammer that sort of expands just inside the bearing. And it does come in handy sometimes, so just another case of heat in the cases. And, um, making sure it's well supported in the vise and then give it a few whacks on the slide and out it comes very handy piece of kit and then that's the uh, thrust washer for the uh, bronze bush and then I got to use my new toy, use the hydraulic press to push the uh, gearbox bearing out because um, that was a bit tight in there, but the hydraulic press made light work of that. And then with all that apart, it's ready to assess the engine. So now we've got the engine all apart, um, I've been through it and sort of checked things out to uh, see what new bits we need and what, what old bits we can use. So I did know the clutch was worn, he did, did, the guy did say, and uh, yeah, literally they got their money's worth out of these corks because the clutch plates were actually rubbing on the rivets of the, uh, this clutch plate on both sides. Um, so there's, there's no meat left in these. So all you do is you push these out. I've ordered two, two new sets, one a spare and uh, one new set. Just push the corks out, put the new corks in. Job done. The other thing is it's got these ball bearings all the way around. And I think at some time in its life it's been stood somewhere for a long time and uh, not used because some of these ball bearings, these ones... I don't know if you can see there. They're really rough where they've been where they've been rusty and then sort of been used again. And I think they're quite quite worn um, because they don't seem to be riding too much 
on the on the clutch in a plate there. So playing with these, I think they're just standard Imperial ball bearings, is to just ease with a punch, ease the sides open slightly, just a little way, so that I can get the ball bearings to drop out, and then drop them all out, drop new ones in, and then just gently tap it back into place. So that would be that. Um, just cosmetically really, the clutch spring screws, again where I suspect it's been sitting, they're really badly pitted. I did think about sticking them in the lathe and turning them down, but they're quite critical to the width of them to, to contain the spring. So as you see, I put a little um, video montage up. I've turned some new spring uh, screws up there. Yeah. Um, ready to go on. I've just got to stick them in the mill and put the slots on them so they're ready to go in.
ordered new springs. I think, I suspect somebody's put some bigger springs in and talking to uh, Lewis at the Vintage Spares place, I'll put their name up, they're very helpful. Um, because I do two types of spring, I do a competition one and a standard one. He said for sort of standard road bikes, they're just too much. You just stick to the standard springs. So we've got some of those on order. Okay, so that's the clutch. Drive sprocket. It was in a bad way. Uh, it sort of had sort of about sort of uh, nine of its 12 teeth. And that one, that one, that one, that's broken. And it's sort of, you can see where, the, you know, that's worn really thin. That one's, and a lot of them are starting to bend over. So luckily I managed to get a new one of these to go on. So that's that. Um, the cylinder head, it's had a repair on the spark plug hole. Looks okay, but I'm gonna sort of just check the whole square and the, and the, and the mating face for the spark plug is, is square to the plug hole. It looks like it's off, off a bit, so we'll machine that flat so it sits nice and nice and square. I mean, the thing you got to remember is you sort of you forget sometimes is this uh, this bike's over 80 years old, so it's going to have a few little bits and bobs that are worn. Um, new primary chain, like I said, I've got the crank is out, and as the guy said, uh, the the main bearings were fine. The, these were fine. Um, but it, there, there is play on the big end. Not a huge amount, but yeah, you can see it moves up and down. So we'll be putting a new new uh, conrod on there with the new bearings. I've ordered, I have got these bearings that came with it, but having looked at them, they haven't got any manufacturer's name on them. They haven't got bearing numbers on them so I suspect they're sort of Chinese or Russian or something so uh, we're just going to sort of keep them as trolley spares or something and I've all going to order a new set and the modern wisdom is um, if you order for the outer bearings there's two bearings on one side one on the other for the outer ones if you order uh, bearings with the, uh, the rubber oil shields on them and then what you do is leave the shield on the outer bearing this this way and that way and then pull the inner rubber shield out so that the oil can get in to lubricate it and it just acts as an extra crank seal either side and also on the gearbox do the same on the gearbox as well because you're on the gearbox you're relying on a felt washer to keep the oil in luckily the barrel is really good and um, so that that's a relief and I've measured it top and bottom and it's pretty close to tolerance top and bottom so I've ordered I thought I was going to use the piston I had new piston rings but as you can see it's it's picked up here I wasn't too too concerned about it could have cleaned that up um, but also one of the pins for the piston rings has Obviously that's been running around and worn it away. Um, it should look like that. And they stop, stop the rings from moving around so that the, uh, they don't clout the port openings on the way up and down. And also because it's a very old piston, it's got this sort of phosphor bronze bush on as well around the gudgeon pin. So it's just sort of something else to possibility of coming loose. So I've ordered a new, new piston, same size, 30 thou oversize and new rings to go in. Knob on the gear change is broken but I don't think this is the original knob so I think I'm going to make a make a knob to go on there. Crank cases are fine there's no damage to them. Um, on these early two strokes they didn't have rubber seals to keep the uh, compression in the crank case they got a phosphor bronze bearing each side there's that that one there and the other one on the crank there which sits in that side that one's a sort of a moving fit on that side it, it moves around there's a spring washer there that pushes this seal crank seal against the housing um, and that's why on these early engines 
they don't recommend using modern two-stroke oil uh, you need a thick old uh, two-stroke oil or, or engine oil because you need the thicker oil to help produce a seal a gas tight seal around these these uh, bushings but there, there's a plan so what you do is because the guy was saying to try and keep it as original as possible is leave, leave this this bush in um, and then machine they're sending me some crank seals and they're very they're an inch but they're very thin so sort of machine down as far as I need to to take the bushing and the the, the new rubber seal and then um, leave the rest of the bushing in and then on the other side machine that out deep enough to take the new seal and um, just trim back just trim back this so it's not rubbing on the inside of the seal and then, then he said if once you've done that and it's gas tight down the bottom then you can run them on modern two-stroke oil because they're not reliant on the oil to make the seal you've got the rubber seal there and the other bit of a problem was the kickstart pull the spring was all um, bent up so I've ordered a new one of those and the pull had a bit of wear on it but it's also for some reason it's been either been ground away or rubbing on the inside there I've ordered a new one and they, they, they're not like this they're sort of uniform uh, side and, and back not ground out like like that one whether it's been rubbing I don't know but the main issue is where the pool sits in here you can see it's chipped broken the broken the back of it where the pool sits there so it allows it to move like that and also it's got a crack I don't know if you can see where it's very thin just there so these these are sort of they didn't have any of these these are quite difficult to get hold of and even second hand ones will probably have the same problem so I'm going to sort of TIG weld this crack up and then build this back up and grind it back to shape for the when I get the new pool and hopefully that should uh, give a few more years good service what we did find in the oil of the gearbox is this you always get a mystery don't you and I've looked through the parts list um, and diagrams and I can't find it so whether it's got dropped in there I don't know it was just in the in the oil sitting in the back of the gearbox uh, yeah it was sitting sort of back here so I mean it could have been dropped through the filler hole who knows well I just uh, I'm getting a, a book on a sort of manual for the 9d engine so I'll have a look through and just make sure I haven't missed something I think that's about it on the engine um, yeah so new piston new springs rebuild the clutch uh, new bearings for the crank new conrod and um, and then pop it back together so this magneto cover isn't original it's just a piece of aluminium that somebody's cut to go on like that um, I've looked at a lot of photos of, of sort of restored versions of this bike and a lot of them have the similar plate but what it should have is a solid plate with a, a dome over the that clears the nut um, so a nice looking thing um, but I suspect probably as they only held on with three screws they, they probably fell off on a regular occurrence but you can still get them so I've ordered a new new cover for the magneto so jobs to do on the frame first one is get rid of this I've got an MOT for it where it did fail for not having steering lock but looking at all the pictures of the older ones, I don't think they were ever fitted with them. So I think it was just one of those over exuberant MOT testers who sort of didn't know about old bikes and uh, says, oh, it's got to have a steering lock and it hasn't got one. Um, because this is just made up from two plates and it sort of, it, you know, it sticks down a bit. And as you can see, 
somebody's got a bit over enthusiastic with uh, humpback bridges or something and it's uh, dented the top of the uh, mud guard so yeah I've got, I'm going to take get rid of that try and get that back to original so another little job that's not urgent is uh, this this speedo ring is quite badly worn in places um, obviously where it hasn't been running true it's only held on by sort of steel plates and screws um, but it's a very basic gear pattern on it so I reckon I could make that on the milling machine without too much trouble another little job straighten the foot foot peg bar it's taken a bit of a clout this side so a bit of heat and move that back probably replace the wheelbarrow handles if I can find some uh, nice rubbers for the uh, foot pegs I think I think the chain guard is homemade I think on the early ones it had a back plate that came down and sort of covered the back of the bottom chain as well just kept the dirt off it a bit so I think we might be able to make something to replace that these aren't correct these rear wheel adjusters as you can see the sort of the frames not designed to take it. it sort of finishes earlier here than it does down there and these have been done up and they pull at an angle and it's bent bent the threaded bar these slots here I don't know if you can see yeah these slots here off for the original adjusters so they push push the axle back can't quite figure out how they didn't fall out or how they worked um, but I'm sort of still looking into that not sure if somebody's modified these maybe cut them out maybe they were a threaded hole originally with a bolt going through not quite sure but yeah need to get rid of these and and sort something out there because I think all this spring for the stand it should be back here not hooked up out up here out the way another thing I've managed to get the, uh, the saddle is looking a little bit tired the, the base is fine it's just that the uh, this is all the, the vinyl's gone hard and starting to tear but you can get these you can still get get these uh, reproductions of these and um, so I've got one on order and hopefully this case just peeling this one off uh, checking the, the horse hair is, is in reasonable condition underneath just putting a new cover on it just to spruce it up a bit and I think that'll do for now oh apart from drop the front and back wheel out check the brakes grease the bearings and um, yeah I think we're about there okay so I need to uh, order some more ball bearings for this so the first thing I need to do is count them so what I've done is a marked one with a pen with a sharpie and then we just count them round so one two three four Fifty. Yeah, fifty. Okay, and the next thing to do is try and find a place to ease that ease that apart.
There we go. Didn't drop any. A miracle. It's coming up as 1865. I reckon they're 1875, they're a bit worn. So 3 16th ball bearings. So there you go, quite a bit of progress on the uh, Excelsior Universal. Um, parts have been ordered, so we're sort of waiting excitedly for them to turn up and then we can sort of get on with uh, reassembling it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give us a little like and um, maybe think about subscribing. You just poke that little Tweed's Garage thing down in the corner, down there. That's it. Yeah, poke that. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, uh, go ahead, be my guest. No question is too stupid. Yes, Jenkins. No, your cheese slice is still in the garage. Apart from that. Okay, so see you next time. Cheerio. Cheerio.